Hey, what's up, Leron here. Today we'll discuss how to create an excellent focal point. Now, at its basis, there isn't, as I've been touting a lot lately, there isn't really technique or approach or any specific uh, method. I would say it is more about um, the uh, place from which you paint. And by that, I mean, uh, what about the scene uh, fascinates or interests you or makes you want to paint it? A great question to ask yourself is why am I painting this scene? Um, and, and don't let me dictate any reason, of course. You know, it could be just for fun, just to practice a specific technique, to do whatever. It could be whatever you want. Um, but the reason for it will dictate uh, how it goes. So uh, there's nothing wrong with any reason you get. Uh, so in any case, my reason for painting this one and, and that really plays into painting a great focal point uh, is that I loved the unique and multiple colors on that cliff and I really wanted to exaggerate them. On the right you get warmths, you get oranges, you get some yellows. In the middle it's more of the grays and uh, very muted blues and then on the left you get a, a few uh, darker blues and I would say purples as well. And that kind of uh, variety in colors really attracted me to try and paint this scene. Uh, and then with the greens below the, the main, you know, stony part of the cliff, um, that peninsula, whatever it is. Uh, and then together with how sharp it is. And then if you look at the line dividing the ocean and the sky, you get almost a feeling of a smoother transition there. That's at least how I was reading the scene. And that really made me want to uh, tackle it. So let's see how that um, informs my decision making and my painting. So as for this focal point, you're seeing me using, again, multiple colors, focusing on uh, grays and muted in the middle, uh, on the left blues and some purples and on the right yellows and oranges. Uh, you saw me use a pre-mixed type of orange. I believe that's um, Burnt Sienna by Daniel Smith. I'm not sure, but it's a similar one. You know, Burnt Umber could work. A lot of different colors could work. All kinds of oranges could work as well. Quinacridone oranges and so on. Um, uh, so that cliff is, was the main attraction to me. Now, as we get to the greens, I do want to express them as a green. So you'll notice how uh, I'm starting. This is a little muted. Uh, so what I'm going to do is add a bit more of a, of a green feel to it in a second. Uh, the colors I'm using, uh, aside from those I mentioned, they're, they're very basic. Uh, honestly, all you need is blue, yellow, red. Uh, if you can have two versions of each, one warm, one cool, then you're increasing the variety of colors you can mix, but you don't have to, you know. Uh, now notice how there's a lot of rocks on the right, so I'm going to be using, almost in a collective sense, just the orange there to the right. Now, in this stage, I'm more concerned with the flow uh, rather than the value. And I'm, I'm actually more concerned with the color and flow. Now, I'm not trying to match the colors I see. Uh, I'm trying to find the colors that are right for me. And that's an insight I recently had that uh, sometimes it really, when I try to match the colors, even if I succeed, it's not necessarily a look that I like. It could be, but not always. And it's not necessarily a process I enjoy. So I kind of threw that out the window. And if the colors I want are the ones that match the reference, so be it. And if not, then not. And I'm not going to force myself to do that uh, because it really doesn't end up with a fun uh, experience. So yeah, that, that was a huge insight for me. Um, and now... You see I'm putting in a bit of yellow there for the lighter areas. I love what this palette looks like, almost a Velasquez one. You know, you have the ultramarine muted green. Uh, you have some warm yellow and that orange together. You know, I still haven't even used the quinacridone here, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so I'm doing some wet and wet just to darken the area around the cliffside. Uh, a few of the shadows there and that uh, change of shape that you see in the mountain uh, it's facing actually directly towards us. Uh, there's a nice little nuance there. Now, my plan is, once I finish capturing this mass of land, um, my plan is to continue and look at this preparation for some highlights next to the rocky shadows. Uh, my plan is to get that ocean to sky relations working with that nice, um, smooth transition, smoother than it appears. Um, that would be the main concern then. Uh, there is that strip of uh, beach, 
you know, with a few highlights there. Uh, honestly, getting those highlights now would be a major headache, so I kind of skipped them, and uh, I plan on getting them later on. You'll see with my pencil and so on. Uh, and now it's off to the ocean. So a strong, uh, strong blue uh, made of thalo blue and uh, French ultramarine. Now, one thing you'll notice uh, is that my previous wash isn't 100% dry. It's maybe 90%, and I'm okay with that. Uh, so look at what happens here. And this is something I'm going to touch upon in a future video. I'm adding water above that, and what happens is paint will always move to where the wetness is. So some of my paint goes up uh, a little bit because the upper part is a little wetter. And by doing that, I'm getting that very nice smooth transition that I will in a second reinforce with some thicker paint because I still want to have a strong, dark uh, blue for the ocean. The ocean is much darker uh, than the sky. And it's not as blue, by the way, as I painted. It's a little more muted than that. But again, Back to the, my point on colors. Uh, I really wanted that blue to shine. Look at how beautifully it goes up into the wet area above it. That's a really nice effect. And it will allow me to go back with the sky without worrying too much about creating a smooth transition because I already made it. Now look at what happens as we get to the center and the reflection of the mountain and the rocks and the grass. It starts to get a little muted. The water almost looks a little more green. Uh, that's the illusion. It's actually not very green. It's just more of a muted, uh, muted blue. That is maybe towards uh, the green a bit. Uh, and then I go back with a bit of a purpley blue there to the left. Um, so this is a really nice... Um, thing to notice. Uh, if you notice that, if you catch that, if that's something you want to express, it's a great way of adding interest. You could paint the ocean as flat uh, blue with the same color and, you know, the fun could come from different uh, uh, in different ways, not necessarily what I'm doing here. Uh, but I recognize that change. And, and again, notice how the things you notice about a scene are going to inform your decisions and the way you paint things. Uh, so I'm going to add a few of these nice little ripples uh, to show the patterns. There are a lot of uh, little boats there, yachts. Uh, so I want to show that there's some movement in the water. Not too much, but some. And look at that beautiful edge between the uh, ocean and the top of the paper, which is basically you know where the, where the sky is going to be. Uh, that's exactly what I was looking for. And I'm going to do the same on the left side in a second. And that's exactly what I'm looking for in terms of the feeling of contrast in edges. Okay, so we have the background, it's going to be very blurry, and then that cliff that's very sharp, okay? Now, something interesting, and by the way, if we're talking about edges, you really want to check out the watercolor realism course if you haven't. If you've gotten the frustration-free watercolor course, you feel good, you feel looser with your paints. If you want to take it to the next level of painting a little more realistically, you want to check that course out because I go in-depth into uh, edges, into all of that, into values, into shapes. And I'm going to show you a basically foolproof process for attaining realistic impression that you can then take in whichever direction you want, whichever style. <coughs> you can go at a more abstract impressionistic style or you can really push the uh, realism. So uh, be sure to check that out. I will put a link in the description box below. Super grateful. Uh, I believe maybe like 10 or 15% of everyone in the Frustration Free Water Color Course joined that. So there's a lot of people that I'm sure will benefit benefit from it. Now, as I'm working on these buildings, I want to direct your attention to something very interesting. Um, when uh, discussing, you know, the harmony of colors here, notice what kind of colors I'm using for the buildings. So when you look at the buildings, it's actually quite gray, right? It's a gray red, it's a gray blue, it's a gray yellow, but that's not what I was looking for here. So I'm using pretty much the same colors to paint the buildings. The only difference is they're a little more muted. Okay, just a little more muted. Um, and what this does is it preserves a very nice harmony for me and in my opinion uh, with the cliff and the ocean and everything else. Um, it's almost like the light buildings catch the colors of the scene in a way. And it will look, and you'll see it once it's done, completely natural, to be honest with you. It will look like it makes all the sense in the world. So in a way, when you see me laying down these reds and yellows and greens and blues, you may think, well, what am I doing here? Um, but actually, it works out quite nicely. Uh, now I'm painting the sky. Uh, all of this painting was done, you know, um, wet on dry. I didn't pre-wet anything, really. Um, I'm not taping the paper, so I have a lot of freedom to move it the way I wanted to. Uh, now notice what happens. Again, I'm going to be careful 
as soon as I meet the ocean that I already painted on the right, as well as get to where the ocean should be on the left. These are the areas to be careful of. So I'm not gonna go and I'm not gonna scrub that area too much. There we go, just a little swipe of the brush and we're done basically with the right side. Uh, and then for the left side, I wanna add that ocean in, right? Uh, so to add that in, you'll see as soon as I get that line, I'm gonna grab back my very, very uh, uh, blue, thick blue paint. Uh, thalo blue mostly that that's very easily rewettable so it's very easy to produce a dark strong paint and you'll see it mimicking uh, the pattern on the right as well so it's about this line where we get to again that's where you want to pay attention I'm digging through my thalo blue uh, grabbing very strong paint and I'm not quick to let them touch I'm first laying it down seeing what it looks like and you'll see that it starts going up a bit. But remember, even if it doesn't go as, as up as high as you want, uh, which is basically the same height as the right side so that it feels like a uh, continuous horizon line, you can always bring back more paint and, and continue with the wet and wet action in a way. Um, so I'm gonna close that small gap with lighter paint. You'll see in a second. Um, just to make sure that there's no weird white gaps there. That's something that happens to me sometimes. And boom, we get that little higher horizon line and we're done. Let that dry. This is fully dry. Look at how beautiful it is. Now, actually, the sky is much darker in the scene and the, the ocean is much darker as well. But I really wanted to keep this a little high key. Uh, some would argue that's not accurate because what you'll notice is with the cliff, I did go as dark as the reference photo. Uh, but I find that works really well. Uh, had I darkened the area under the rock, if that makes sense, all of the grass and the rocks, and I gone darker there, the ocean would require would require almost to be darker, but I didn't, I kept things quite, um, quite high key. Uh, so at this point of the painting, the main idea and the main focal point, which I consider excellent, have been achieved. And that is that contrast with the blurry background and that strong rock. And if we zoom in on the rock, all of the fascinating colors and grays and yellows and blues and, and all of that. Um, so the main idea has been created. Now all that's left is to fill in the blanks for some of the details. The way I do this is automatically I go a little more muted in the shadows there uh, because it's so colorful in the lights. I don't really need a dark color. Um, I don't really need a, a, a colorful dark color. Uh, and so you see I'm, I'm establishing some use. This is the edge of a building. Um, working at it very impressionistically at this stage. Um, very loosely even I would say. Uh, trying not to drag too much attention from the uh, focal point over to the left bottom corner. It doesn't make any sense. So I'm keeping things light flowing. You know, I'm going to put in some of the trees, some foliage. Uh, pretty much in one go. And again, I can do this because I put in all the work with the previous uh, sections. So I can kind of take it easy uh, on this side. Um, so it's interesting, you know, it's, it's interesting how one part of the process in, um, influences another and how what you recognize in the scene um, informs your decisions and how you paint it. Uh, I will say this, you know, if you find yourself forcing yourself to, to paint a certain subject or a certain thing, you know, that's nothing that happens by force uh, can work. That's just reality. Um, even if it works once, it won't be sustainable. It won't feel good. It won't answer the artistic need. Um, so uh, one almost has to find the natural place from which to paint. Um, and if you haven't found it yet, uh, it's okay, you know, your starting point is your starting point, but have that in mind, you know. Now, uh, uh, have that in mind that, that, like, you have the freedom. You don't even have to paint with watercolor. That's another thing to understand. You can use a mixed media. You can do whatever you want. You can use watercolor with a bunch of other mediums, which is something I'm planning on doing in the future. Um, so, uh, really, no rules, no right or wrong. Uh, everything is highly, um, I would say, highly personal and highly uh, explorative. Um, so here I am closing that gap, fell too wide. Uh, and now everything, notice how again I took a loose approach with the buildings, especially the one in the corner, bottom left, okay? Uh, now onto the highlights. I'm gonna be using my uh, Faber-Castell, is it? Uh, pencils, these are um, 
um, what do you call that? <laughs> I forgot the name of the pastel pencils. Uh, and I found that these work really nicely um, for anything that's not as linear uh, that I would usually uh, use a, uh, a uniball, you know, uh, gel pen that I'll, I'll show you later for the smaller details. Uh, notice how I'm adding these, you know, very freely. Um, looking at the pattern overall, uh, you know, the whole right side of that island or peninsula looks completely different, and I actually love it. Uh, I love that contrast with the the sea. Uh, so uh, anyway, putting in some of these, there's a lot of details here, you know, because uh, it's a dock, it's a it's it's a beach. There's a lot, a lot there, um, and this is a small piece of paper. So I'm I'm uh, putting it the way I kind of um, I idealize it in a way. Uh, I'm adding a bit of shadows under the boats, and I'm, what I'm going to do is smear them. You'll see in a second, I believe. I'm kind of using my finger or a piece of paper to. Um, make them a little more blurry, um, not as uh, prominent uh, linearly. Um, uh, and again, that dock reinforcing that, a bit of that white gel pen. For the smaller details, um, I'm going to grab my uh, my uh, pastel pencil again. Uh, just get a few of these down. You know, this isn't really ever a problem to me. I can add more details, few details. Uh, as soon as I feel like I'm happy with the result, I stop. Uh, and we're going to sign this. And here is the final result. I love this. Very simple, very loose. You'll notice it's not really adhering uh, that closely to a lot of aspects of the reference. But it's more of a communication with what I find interesting about it. And that was what's important for me. Uh, so I will reiterate once again, uh, you know, find the thing that makes you want to paint something. And if you're wondering or if you're unsure, ask yourself, why am I painting? this and I'm not aiming for you to have a specific answer any answer you come up with um, as long as it's true to you is great you know there's no right or wrong answers here uh, and if you do want to support my work and learn how to paint with watercolor two courses I'd recommend highly uh, one is the frustration free watercolor course if you're struggling with looseness the other is the watercolor realism course if you want to achieve that realistic impression if you struggle with drawing check out my draw anything course a very intuitive direct uh, sketching and drawing approach that I think you'll benefit from uh, that's how I paint uh, how I sketch most of my scenes including this one and I will see you in the next vid until then take care